Welcome to worship for Sunday, November 19th, 2023, here at First Presbyterian Church of Gardner, Kansas. There are three scripture passages for this week. The first is Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the work of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And the last reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Here in these readings, may God bless them to our understanding today and in the days ahead. I think, I think... I am ready for Thanksgiving that is coming and for the holiday season that follows. Now, I'm not hosting, so that makes it easier for me than for some of you, I imagine. Uh, I'm also aware, very aware, that this will be a very different year for me after the unexpected death of my sister this summer. We always celebrated at her home. As a family, we are making plans, different plans from other years, consciously. And we know that there will be some moments of grief alongside the celebration. This week is such a mix of moods, really, for everyone. A lot of joy and excitement, a little sadness and some loneliness for, for some, even, fear or reluctance if you are seeing someone who, who is difficult to get along with. It also can be stressful if, if your finances, finances are stretched or your time is not under your control or if there's some other complication in this season. Uh, and, and that's just Thanksgiving week. That's not even to mention the entire month and a half of expectations till the new year. Some of us are giggling. Some of us are praying. Some of us are already exhausted. Some of you have already finished your shopping and your, your planning. Now notice I swapped over to some of you because um, I'm definitely not in the finished with preparations category. All of this is to say, I started thinking about uh, everyone who would be worshiping this weekend um, and how differently we all might be feeling, the mix of moods in the room, so to speak. Even within myself alone, I, I am a mix of conflicting emotions this holiday season. We, we are not all in the same place. 
What might God want to say to us, to each of us today, in light of that great diversity? What should I preach? What is God's word for each of us today? The verse that kept running through my mind was that short passage from Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now usually when I've heard these verses in the past, the advice part has leapt to mind, the verbs, uh, rejoice, pray, give thanks, an attitude and a way of life. Be positive, focus on God. But this time in preparation, as I read these verses, the modifiers of the sentence rang out loud and clear for me. Always, without ceasing, in all circumstances. The message to me was very personal this year. No matter what you're feeling, Focus on God, always, without ceasing, in all circumstances. Even if I am missing my sister this year, as I am, find reason to rejoice. Look for the joy. Go, God will give you what you need. God will give you the joy. Even if you're lonely, or you're sad, or you're afraid, or you're confused, or anything else. Appreciate God's love for you. Uh, God's love all around you. It's here. Even if you're struggling, perhaps especially if you are struggling, uh, reach out to God in prayer and be with God and listen for God's voice in all circumstances. God will speak. God will speak clearly whatever your circumstances, whatever you need. And if you're excited and happy and joyful and blessed, well, hallelujah, thanks be to God. Uh, if you are abundantly aware of the goodness in your life and the, the blessings and the gifts all around you, then even more so, rejoice, pray, give thanks, for this is the will of God. This is what God wants for you. Joy, connection, gratitude, abundance, life. This is what God wills for all of us. When I was in seminary, uh, we were told that in preaching we should, and the phrase was, we should comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. And I've mentioned that to some of you before in other circumstances. Um, comfort the afflicted and afflict or stir up those who are comfortable. And the problem with that challenge is that the comfortable and the afflicted are sitting right side by side in the same pew. Uh, and we don't really know which is which, who needs what, uh, who is comfortable and who needs comfort. We're sitting side by side, imagining what others are going through. But really, in my experience, the problem is that we usually, everybody usually, hears the wrong message. Those who need comfort often hear the challenge and, and don't think they're good enough. While those who are comfortable and could use some stirring up uh, think that the challenge is meant for somebody else. Everyone else, maybe. Uh, besides, I personally am much better at bringing the comfort uh, than bringing the affliction or the conviction. In fact, that's, that's what I've already done during this sermon time. I've already, in the first part of this sermon, my advice to find joy, connection, gratitude, abundance, life, uh, focus on God who loves you. I tend to bring the comfort. I tend to hear and preach the comfort. But the truth is, God has high expectations for us, as well as bringing the comfort. 
Uh, we are meant to follow Jesus. We are meant to work for justice. We are meant to be the image of God reflecting God's love in the world. That is huge. There, there was always more to do, more love to give, more people to help, more light to shine. There's always more. The challenge is part of every call that God extends. Be the best that God has created you to be. Again, that's huge. So here I come to the conflict part, which I hate. <laughs> the question is, how is God challenging us in the week ahead, in this Thanksgiving week? Um, how might we serve Christ more faithfully? How might we serve Christ in whatever circumstance we find ourselves this week? There are a lot of songs and prayers and poems about praising God in all circumstances, in, in difficult experiences. Uh, I praise you in the storm. It is well with my soul. Jesus, take the wheel. We could continue listing them. Uh, there's a lot of good advice about how to get through difficult times by dwelling in God's love. And it's wonderful advice. But only experiencing that love of God, only wallowing in that love, feeling God's love, only dwelling in that love can really carry you through. Living inside God. You can't explain it. You can't understand it. You can't make it happen. But you can receive God's gift and live in God's love. God has invited us. Be loved. The reading from Ephesians talks about the power of God's love, the power that raised Jesus from the dead, the power to move mountains, the power to change worlds. We are reminded that through the Holy Spirit, we have been given the same power of God's love. You have been given that gift. You have within you the power to change the world. We have been given the power of God, by God, to bring life, to bring hope, to bring joy, to bring peace, to bring light, to bring love. We don't always embrace that greatness. But scripture tells us we are called to live into that power and to share God's love in the world. We can do whatever needs to be done by God's grace and with God's power. What will that look like for us, for you in this week ahead? How will you show God's love? How will you shine Christ's light? I realize that is an enormous challenge, living God's grace in the world. So just carve out a little bit. Don't try to do everything. We can't. But carve out one little bit. Do one thing to extend God's love in the world. And if you do, and if we all do, that's a hundred acts of love powered by God's Spirit in this world. Just from this one congregation. Imagine that. Imagine if each of us does one loving thing this week. Imagine what God can do. What if we do two things? To share God's love, to shine Christ's light. What if we do two things to show love and joy and connection and gratitude and abundance and life? Imagine how far and wide and deep and full God's light of love will shine in the world. I'll let you keep pondering that and pondering God's call to you, God's challenge for you, God's will for you this week. Listen for God's voice. And as Ephesians says, may God's spirit give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know Jesus so that 
with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive what is the hope to which Christ has called you. This week, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus, working in me and in you. Thanks be to God. And amen.